I got the early access to Suicide Squad Guild the Justice League and I regret it. Obviously, before we get into the bigger talking points of this video, there's going to be heavy spoilers in this. So if you do not want to be spoiled, please click off this video now. But if you want to save your money, continue watching. I want to try to tackle this in a different way than I've seen others. And I want to hit the gameplay first. The entirety of this game, but mostly the gameplay, can be described in three stages. You've got the first stage, which is the first hour of gameplay. It looked promising. Like I looked at it and I was playing it and I was thinking, man, this was, this was nice. I've got high hopes for this game. I'm sure it's gonna be great. Let's go. I'm looking forward to it. Second hour of gameplay. I started to get like a little bit of those little signs of like, this might, this might get boring pretty quick, but you know, I still had my hopes up high and I was looking at it and I was still having fun with it at the time. Third stage, which is the third hour of play, which is just about where I hit the flash boss fight. Wait, that's it? Because of the fact that the gameplay gets stale quick. In the game, you've got two, maybe three enemy types max, and all of them play the same. You do not have to change up strategy to fight them. You do not have to really do anything that you necessarily wouldn't naturally think of doing whenever fighting them. Every single one of them, no matter the enemy type, is aim, shoot, harvest shields, counter, move out of the way. There's no differentiation in the way that each enemy plays, they all can be pretty much tackled the same way. Seeing as this is supposed to be the continuation of the Arkham Batman universe, the later on in the story of that said universe, Considering we've come from all of the Batman Arkham games and the fluidity of that gameplay to this clunky, almost unfinished mess that gets boring quick, it really leaves your head scratching. The gameplay really falters in the 10 second rule of gaming where your system or your area of play should be interesting to play every 10 seconds and if 10, 20, 30 seconds go by and the gameplay is not captivating you, then it's eh? That's exactly where the problems arise in this. And then you get to the mission types, right? Which again, gets put into the, <laughs> what I like to call the stages of doom of this game, where you've got escort missions, destroy this big artillery gun, or take out these nodes to destroy this shield. And I can't tell you how many times I've hit these missions, right? I don't know if it's maybe the files or something that went wrong in the installation, but I had several instances in said missions where the enemies just wouldn't spawn, especially in the escort missions where the enemy spawning is crucial to you finishing the mission. And it was only by the grace of the Lord above that I was able to get this, <laughs> these files to work again and get the enemies to spawn. And of course you've got the boss battle fights, which are two or three stages of stand in these certain sections of the map where you can't be touched, move around every now and then and shoot them until they die. With basically no need to change up your strategy on fighting these guys, these battles became stale quick. Now to the main course of this game, the prime rib, the burnt steak, if you will, <laughs> the story. I'm not gonna say that the story was horrible because it wasn't. It wasn't Gotham Knights level of horrible, but I'll say it was horribly executed. Granted, this is the Suicide Squad, so you're going to be getting jokes in here and that kind of stuff that you normally wouldn't get in like a Batman experience. Some of these jokes were so stale and uninspired, it makes you wonder if anybody that was writing that dialogue has ever had a conversation with another human being. Now, there were a couple of jokes here and there that were a little fun you know, got a little chuckle out of me, but none of them really made me guffaw, stomach laugh, really have any semblance of laughter past. <laughs> Then you've got the way that they handled each and every one of the Justice League's deaths. Again, this can be summarized by promising but disappointing. There's no real feeling of impact whenever these characters die. It's just they outclass you at first, make a snarky comment, you fight them, and then they're just dead. The Flash, at first, 
seems like this character that you're not going to be able to beat, like he's just too fast. He makes a snarky comment and then he just dies. Green Lantern has this small little segment with Deadshot, almost like there was some backstory between them, but that's never expanded upon. He makes a snarky comment and then dies. And Batman, he's handled the same way. He seems like he's going to be impossible to beat. He makes a couple of snarky comments and then dies. Now, of course, with Batman, he, there's a little bit more buildup with him because in the game, you can see him start you off in the distance which I think is cool there were some segments of how they handled Batman in this game that I really enjoyed but the vast majority of it was muddied because of the fact that he seemed impossible to beat made a snarky comment and then just died. A little bit before the Batman death, you get the Wonder Woman death, where that one makes a little bit more sense because she's killed off by Superman. I feel like there's some way they could have maybe handled that a little bit better. At the same time, it's a character that we barely even knew, so it's, it's one of those things where it's, they handled it as well as they could have, I guess. Now going back to Batman here for a second, I'm not mad that he died because the game is quite literally called Kill the Justice League, but they could have handled his death so much better than being used as bait to drag Superman out of hiding to fight him. It's not even that they killed him in a way that even made sense either, because whenever Harley points her gun, again, Harley, a C tier level character that Batman's mopped the floor with before without having to really strategize as much as he has for any of the other villains, she aims a gun at his head, pulls the trigger. Now, granted, Batman is still human he would die to that but my biggest problem with that situation is that she aims at the most armored part of his cowl most people would think okay if she's gonna shoot batman in the head shoot in the mouth area because this is the most unarmored piece on the cowl not the dead center of it and you can't even use the oh well maybe the cowl was compromised in a way that it was damaged or something like that no nope, it is in perfect shape besides maybe a little blood on it that's it and with superman we get three interactions with him we see him stop a nuke that was pretty cool. We see him kill Wonder Woman. Okay. And then the next time we see him is the time where we actually kill him. And Superman, I kid you not, dies like the average villain in every cartoon ever. He bucks and bounties up and not even kidding. He dies in the most anticlimactic way possible, which funnily enough describes each and every death in this game anticlimactic shoot one of the characters that we knew and loved from the arkham universe the tim drake robin just dies off screen with barely any mention to him i just feel like there were so many different ways they could have taken this game to make it make sense and they just saw every one of those roads and thought let me go down the most crooked uneven and inconvenient road we can but i don't know let me know what you all think in the comments below regardless if you want to play this game with your friends go ahead i guess but if you're looking for a game that has some actual story keep looking